Well, it's probably no big news to know that people already know that Al Gore is a big time hypocrite and, you know, an environmental clown, more or less. That's basically how I have to call it. You know, here he's probably giving some, uh, how big was that fish I caught story or some kind of garbage. But, uh, you know, I want to bring out a couple other facts about this guy and actually even the elite people that are pushing the global climate change, global warming theories, and the cap and trade, the carbon tax, you know, the global carbon tax, and all this type of stuff. Actually, how they're all interrelated and all inter interconnected with industries that they will financially benefit by, you know, if there's alternative energy. Now, Al Gore specifically, but he's not the only one. I actually want to point out other things. Al Gore specifically has been you know, a very big proponent of, uh, you know, the global warming, taxing uh, individuals and companies for, you know, carbon emissions and things like that. But he's the biggest hypocrite going. But I'm going to tell you, though, they're all in the club. Here he is, Al Gore with George Bush. They're all in the club, man. This is one of the games that they're using to just... I don't want to make this a doom and gloom video, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing more specifically. His home, and Al Gore's home in Tennessee, Tennessee, uses way 20 times more electricity than the average home out there. He doesn't have solar panels. He's got it. You know, he doesn't use any of the technology that he supposedly he he says he wants and advocates. He advocates technology, alternative energy technology, when he's got his hand in the pie on the profits or when it's government funded. Or they got some kind of grants, and you know he's partaking in all these profits. But his actual own mansion—it's a huge air-conditioned space, heated pool, no solar panels, no wind turbines, none of this stuff. You know, you know, just let the air conditioner use up the energy left and right on space he doesn't even use. He just gobbles up energy left and right. But I'm going to tell you. He's not unique amongst the unique you elite. The richest two percent in this country create four times as many greenhouse gases per capita as the poorest twenty percent. They're all in it. They're all full of it. You know, these are the ones that are telling you, "Oh yeah, you got to have this, and you got to have that, and la di da di da." They don't practice what they preach. <laughs> and Al Gore is like. You know, the main one leading the charge and not practicing what he preaches. The wealthy often criticized for hogging too much of the nation's wealth are also disproportionately contributors to the global warming. If there is global, I don't, you know, there is no global warming, but that's a whole other subject. But the thing is, the people that are actually causing the most pollution are the ones on the top 1 or 2%. Not the people on the bottom. And here you got laws in uh, Utah that they try to freaking push through about banning wood-burning stoves and things like that. It's it's ridiculous. Now, as far as Al Gore himself, Al Gore was the co-recipient of the 2007 Nobel Peace Prize with the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Now he gets he's another one like Hillary Clinton. It gets big speaking, uh, big money for speaking. And, you know, they're hooking him up. It's not that he's got such great speeches. They're just hooking him up with money. His, you know, this is according to Wikipedia. His speaking fee is $100,000 a shot, you know. So Hillary, you know, she gets $250,000 a shot. She's going to be your champion. You know, if she wins, I say the vote's rigged. And it's time for freaking to hell with him, man. No cooperation with these bozos. Uh, in March 2008, Gal Gore gave a talk via video conferencing in order to promote the technology as a means he argued in fighting global warming you know what he's involved in profiting by this technology that's why he's pushing it too so his critics critics will tell you that there's an alleged conflict of interest from his role as both an investor in green technology companies as an advocate of tax payer funded green technology subsidies so taxpayers are subsidizing his investments. Cute, right? If, things that he's not even doing on a personal level because, you know, that's the biggest thing that really is a major tip-off that he's a big-time hypocrite. 
He's not. He doesn't even have this green technology in his mansion in Tennessee. You know, he's got this big heated pool. He's got all this thousands of feet of space, all air conditioned. He's using up way more electricity than anybody in his city. It's ridiculous. And he's talking about you know save electricity in the environment and taxing people for freaking using this stuff up. So, you know, he allegedly makes erroneous scientific claims. Now, I know he makes a lot of erroneous scientific claims because the thing that really affects the Earth's climate more than anything is the sun. You know, solar flares in the sun and the ebb and the flow of the sun's power, which happens every several hundred years, and it looks like we're going into a mini ice age, unfortunately. Global warming would actually be a good thing because there'd be a lot more land that could be farmed. Yeah, maybe the cities might get freaking underwater, but you know, you just move the people and there's plenty of freaking extra land that could be farmed because the growing seasons would be much greater. Actually, during periods of warming periods in our Earth, during our Earth, you go all the way back thousands of years, you know what? Those are the times when societies and civilization flourished during the warmer periods on this Earth. When societies collapsed, it was during the colder periods because the growing season got shortened and there wasn't enough food to go around. It's not a joke. You know, technology's not going to save it unless you really roll up your sleeves and go do the job. He, uh, he you know, it goes on to say he consumes excessive amounts of energy. And, you know, I just showed that with his house. He's got the big heated pool. He's got the big house. He doesn't use any freaking uh, renewable energy. He just pays the electric bill. It's a ridiculous amount, but it's nothing compared to the money he gets because all he's got to do is talk for an hour and he's got a hundred grand. I'm, you know, and the other thing is, you know, I seen even on Wikipedia what they say the Bush family is worth. I don't know what they're worth, but there's so much I've seen on people in reality. Not, I can't apply this to the Bush family. I can't make apply this to the Gore fan, Gore Gore or anybody or even Hillary Clinton. But I've seen other people, and I can't be freaking mentioning names, but I've seen other people that had ridiculous amounts of wealth in the billions, and you know what? They did not show up on the Forbes list. They would have... I mean, I, I, I'd have to give you... I, I forgot what some of the stuff was, but some of it was even... Um, some type of uh, rare gems that were found in the earth. They had stored in a naval facility. I don't know, hundreds of millions of dollars. I forgot. I put it out on other videos, but I don't remember what the hell it was again. Um, the thing is, people's wealth is hidden, man. And, you know, it's a joke what they tell you even on Wikipedia, what these people are worth. They're worth way more than that. It, way, way more. I can't really tell you what they are worth because I don't know. But I know I've seen a number of people that don't even show up on Forbes that have wealth that is mind-boggling and they don't even show up on um, the damn Forbes list. So, uh, you know, I think Bush and Gore, they're probably, they're probably billionaires for all I know, I'd assume. I make an assumption because I freaking don't have any evidence on that deal, but I've seen plenty of the other people that were billionaires, and I was like, more than billionaires. And they don't show up anywhere on a Forbes list. This guy's hooked up in a lot of different ways. There's a lot of there's a lot of financial dealings that go on that are not open to the public through private placement platforms and secret trades and all this other crap. A lot of stuff goes on. So uh, he also allegedly refuses to debate others on the subject of global warming. Yeah, he would probably get blown out of the water for that because, you know, if you look at last winter, you know, what the hell happened? You know, it was global cooling to the max, man. Yeah, well, except in Alaska and uh, California, but across most of the globe, man, it was definitely, they were setting records left and right all over the place. Whether it was in southern Italy, northern Africa, Saudi Arabia, even from Europe to Ukraine, Scandinavia, Russia, China... Vietnam and, and uh, Japan, they're breaking all kinds of records. But Al Gore, you know, he's the biggest damn hypocrite in the world. But you know what? It's not just him. It's a reality that the elite in this country will spend more on, you know, uh, money on energy, which is a small 
you know, fraction of their disposable income, but they will use way more uh, energy resources than poor people. Yet the EPA is trying to come down on people. You know, the EPA is not even the one that's doing this on its own. They're being, they're having their arms twisted by NGOs that are basically funding Al Gore. You know, non-governmental organizations that are basically think tanks that are funding Al Gore and also making policy for the EPA, where they're going to twist, you know, twisting their arms, which in turn is twisting the arms of the poorest people in this country. Al Gore actually uses way more electricity than, um, you know, it's it's it, Al Gore's home uses more than 20 times the national average. Al Gore's mansion, located in a posh Bellamede area, Nashville, consumes more electricity every month than the average American household using an entire year, according to the Nashville Electric Service. You know, it's been documented. He doesn't use any renewables. And, you know, I mean, like Jimmy Carter used to turn down the uh, temperature in the White House. You know, he's trying to practice. It was a big show, but it was, at least he was practicing when he was preaching, you know. But the thing is, the upper 2% in this country, they actually do not practice, you know, saving electricity, saving energy, or anything like that. The whole thing's a con. The whole thing. And I don't know what the hell you can do about it, but, you know, it's almost like, you know, you got to stay below the radar. And, 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 you know, me even opening my big mouth about this stuff is probably not the safest thing in the world to do. But, um, you know... Al Gore, besides him being a hypocrite to the max, you know, not just with the global warming, but in his personal use of electricity, he he will invest in and profit from companies that are using green technology because those companies are subsidized by the government, which helps their profitability. They're subsidized by the taxpayer. Yeah, he basically gets kickbacks, I guess you want to call it that way. I don't, you know, I don't know how you would call it, indirectly one way or another, you know? How would you like to have a business that's subsidized by the government? Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? You can't lose, right? Yeah, just here. Government just sends you a big fat check, you know? Hey, because I like, you got to be, we, we got to subsidize this type of area. So, you know, if you're a stockholder or you're an investor in it, you're just going to rake in a little bit more, you know? But they're all like that, man. All of them. Now, George Bush, he actually has the solar panels and stuff in his home, but it's he's still a bunch of bullshit. They all are, man. Because the reality of the situation is humankind really can't put a dent in the, in the weather of the earth that much if we use a little common sense, if we're using, you know, coal or oil or fuel oil or uh you know whatever wood burning stoves as long as you know it's not gone to the extremes where there's absolutely no emissions controls on them at all but you're not going to actually put it you know by releasing the heat from these uh things to heat your home with adequate insulation where you're keeping most of the heat in a home you're not going to really affect the climate you know what really affects the climate the sun the ebb and the flow of the solar energy of the sun, which has been going on for eons since time began. And it, these guys all know it. You know, Al Gore is not going to debate that deal because he's loose. You know? <laughs> you look at the sun compared to all the crap that's on the earth with, you know, SUVs and and uh, home heating. It's it's like a joke, man. The sun has got way more power. If you have sun, solar energy uh, flow just drops off a little bit. Well, that affects our climate, I and mean, that's exactly what's going on. You know, actually, it's mud on their face big time, or icicles on their face big time, because what's going on is that, you know, we've, we've seen a record winter in the Northeast. I know in Alaska and California it was record hot, but there's been record cold through most of the globe, and actually, that's the pattern how things work. Um, when you go into global mini ice age, the more severe mini ice age, or even a major ice age, Actually, to tell you the truth, we're 500 years late on the major 10,500-year cycle of major ice ages. 
Who the hell knows? Nobody freaking knows what's going to happen exactly. Every, there's a lot of scientists now saying we're going into at least a severe mini ice age. I don't know how the hell, you know, these guys are still going to pass all this freaking garbage with, uh, you know, taxing um, coal and, uh, you know, oil and fuel oil and gasoline and all this kind of garbage through a global, you're going to try to, but it's it's going to look so ridiculous to the public. And you know what's going to really happen eventually? Um, because, you know, it's really, no matter how technologically involved modern society becomes, when you have a severe differential between the upper crust and the masses, it makes it ripe for something. I don't know what can happen. Either it's a war or revolution or just mass um, disobedience of of uh, complying with regulations and stuff that these guys are trying to put down on people. Because when it comes down to your survival, are you going to actually... You know, <laughs> go by every nitpicky rule there is. If you're, if it's a matter of life and death, obviously not. I mean, if you are, you gonna freeze to death in the winter if the APA says you can't use wood to heat your house, and you know you're you're uh, you're being taxed up the gazoo on using uh, fuel oil or to trying to ration you or something like that. What are you gonna do? You know, what are you gonna do? Right? What are you gonna do? So, at the least, there's going to be a revolution of non-compliance. And already, there's probably a lot of people already doing that. But um, these guys are not just hypocrites. <laughs> They're evil bastard control freaks, man. I mean, I'm telling you the obvious, but I don't think a lot of people really knew about Al Gore's house and the fact that the uh, upper 2% in this country use over 20 times as much per capita as the bottom 20% in this country. And look where all the regulations are being aimed at. The bottom 20%. I'm telling you, man. These guys are stupid. Because it's almost like the situation's the same thing like what happened in ancient Rome. It goes full circle, man. Or, you know, 1776 in uh, France. You know? <laughs> For crying out loud. I mean, you know, what do these people think? It's like when they're up in their ivory tower and they're making these speeches and they're all congratulating each other and they're patting each other on the back. I mean, they don't realize all around them that the masses are getting damn well restless as all hell and they ain't buying their bullshit anymore. And I don't know if I don't have, you know now I'm realizing too like Hillary Clinton nobody's buying her bullshit. Not too many are. A lot less people are buying her bullshit than I thought, and I realize now that she's not as popular as the major media polls are trying to show her to be. And, um, yeah, it's almost like uh, same kind of garbage with Vladimir Putin in Russia, too. All these guys are a pile of gulp garbage. All of them. And, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe when there's actually, uh, you know, maybe there will be a major conflict. All this will lead to a major conflict. But, you know, it always leaves it ro room for a right for revolution in uh, the respective countries where even... You know, the Chinese will overthrow the uh, Chinese elite. The Russians will overthrow the, the oligarchs and the crooks and the mafia on the top. And in the United States, you know, the, the Americans overthrow the, uh, you know, the, the political apparatus of the Republican and Democratic machines. You know, that's really what happens. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this as a little side note. Did you know that in China... Um, it's it's a country where the most wealthy are trying to make a mass exodus from China. I, you know, it's almost like, um, you know, Jim Rogers likes to talk about, you know, China's going to be the rising star for the next century. And that may very well be after the Communist Party is destroyed. Because, you know, given the, um, you know, the free range of commerce back to the people that are not being this usurped by the Communist Party in, in China. Yeah, I think that may be true. But as of now, with the Communist Party in complete control, there's actually a mass exodus out of China of the most brightest elite people that made their money on their own to get the hell out of there. And you know where they want to go, even though it looks pretty bad over here from, because we're over here now and we see things close up. They want to go to North America. You know, the biggest problem we got with North America is people like 
Gore, Bush, Hillary Clinton, Cheney, I mean, uh, you know, Obama, what else? You know, all of them, right? Uh, and, you know, who they're, who are they controlled by? Yeah, it's the old money elite. The old money elite. I'll just leave you with that because, yeah, it's Rockefeller, but, you know, I really don't know all the names. I don't know all the names, but you can pretty much tell what the names are because if you look at who what is written in the Council on Foreign Relations publications, uh, it pretty much tells you exactly where and who funds what, who funds what study and all this kind of stuff, and who pays what scientist to say who it is, what what the deal is with global warming. You you pretty much know what the deal is. You pretty much know where it's coming from. But you know we we the people ain't listening to no more. And uh, you know the fact that these guys are all a bunch of hypocrites, not just Al Gore, but even all the upper two percent of this country using this much energy resources yet talking about climate change and all this global warming stuff, and yeah, we ought to do something about it. None of them are doing what the hell, they're, none of them are practicing what they're preaching. They're a load of it, man, to the max, to the max. Yeah, they might buy an electric car or some crap like that, but in the meantime, they go back to their, you know, 4,000 4, square foot heated pool or some crap, and they, <laughs> you know, they talk about, you know, hey, I save money on my electric car. Or to go back to their, uh, you know, 10,000, 12,000 uh, square foot mansion that's under air conditioning at 68 degrees. When meantime, you know, the pool outside is heated and stuff to a uh, nice toasty 82 degrees. <laughs> These guys are such a load of it. All of them, man. All of them. But you know, that's just the world the way it is in the professional world. And the professionals ain't nothing compared to the elite. The professionals are the, um, the weasels that blow smoke up their elite's kazoos and try to get their favor so they can make some nice fat fees from them. But the elite are the real devils, man. They're the entrepreneurs that are constantly looking for ways to make money. And, you know, there's no rest for the wicked, that's for sure. I don't understand how they actually are continuing to make money. But, you know, if you really dig down deep, how is, it, how is this all being kept afloat? as an apparatus where, you know, Al Gore has the money, somebody has the money to pay Al Gore $100,000 a speech and Hillary Clinton $250,000 a speech. If you look very, very carefully at the upper one basis point, which is the 1% of the 1%, they are all connected, virtually all of them are connected to the banking and finance system. So it is actually... <laughs> that really tells you a lot what's going on. It's actually how money is actually created, how money is uh, comes into existence, how money is actually uh, infused into the uh, biggest investment houses, and how even markets are propped up by the you know the plunge protection team, which is the nickname for the uh, I forgot what it was called, the real name for it, you know, whereby. You know, they will prop up the investments of the upper crust through, uh, you know, electronic methods. So, the game is rigged. But the problem is, the game is nothing but an electronic casino. And the reality of the situation is that none of these people know how to do shit on their own. They never will. Al Gore couldn't even freaking skim, a, skim the flies out of his own pool. He's that stupid. <laughs> but I don't know, man. I just want to point out some of these things, you know, take it for what it's worth. Probably not much. You know, I don't want to beat the drums of the conspiracy garbage here too much. But I have to tell you, though, that it's not just Al Gore. It's all these jackasses on the top. They're all a bunch of damn hypocrites, man. They talk one way, but they don't they do the other way, man. And, you know, one of the biggest games I got to I got to talk longer on this because I know a little more about this shit. Actually, some of the biggest games they play is even, and it don't matter what, you know, how high they are in society, but the game is they always got to make it look like they're philanthropists. They're always giving a charity to the nice person. That's the public image. As a matter of fact, most of the stuff that they get involved in that's nonprofit or for the good of humanity, they got another angle that they work that's, that's lined in their pockets all the time. I've seen this a gazillion different times. I kind of respect them for their shrewdness, but they're weasels, man. 
They're weasels. They're weasels. That's about all I gotta say.